Okay, here I am in Home Depot, which is a major chain in America. And I want to show some of the, the products that are regularly available to consumers to do uh, energy retrofits on their own homes. So they get pretty serious about weather stripping and weather seals for doors. And they start from some pretty basic things. You need to have a good uh, surface to press against. So one thing that's common here is door thresholds. And this is a metal plate that can be cut to size to fit your door. And then it includes a rubber uh, insert that uh, will push up and meet the bottom of the door from, from below. So this goes on the, on the bottom of your door frame and that accepts the seal. Another is the sides here. So they sell kits uh, that you, again, cut these to size for the, the sides of the door. You apply it to the outside of the frame uh, and really allows you to get a good custom fit because sometimes older doors don't fit like they used to. And so this allows you to custom uh, fit that so that it really gets a good seal. It's interesting that there are several kinds. There's weather strip with draft stopper flaps uh, like these. Then they even have ones that have a magnet seal. Inside the rubber is uh, a bit of, um, actually here it is, it's a magnet strip that goes along. And when it goes up to a metal door, uh, exterior door, it sticks, really sticks, gets a good seal to the actual metal door. So that's, that's a way to get a good seal, get a good seal on a metal door. And then also all sorts of different profiles to fit the kind of door that you have. Some doors are old and wonky. Uh, they just don't close like they used to. They're sort of off kilter. For those door kits that already have seals, they have replacement inserts for them. So this goes into the existing uh, door seal that comes with the front door as a, a kit. You can rip out the old one if it's been degraded and replace it with a new one. So they have uh, several profiles that will fit all, all sorts of doors. For the door sweeps at the bottom of the door, which is often the biggest gap, there's a variety of them. So many of them have a metal, metal carrier. So this one has a aluminum strip with uh, screw holes, uh, a slot, so you can uh, even fit it to a gap of varying width. This one has a rubber flap that will close against a threshold. This is another one. There's seals with rubber. There's seals with brushes. Sometimes the threshold might be uneven and a brush might work better. Then they have a bunch of door seals that are self-stick. So this is very easy to do. You cut it with scissors. And this one uh, has a peel and stick adhesive. You peel the release paper off and then you stick this to the door and that, that gives a, a decent seal. Probably not as durable as one with a metal carrier. This brand here, there are some available in Australia, and this one has a really high-powered adhesive and a door seal of uh, with three fins on it. So uh, if one won't fit or two won't won't get the seal, three flaps will get the seal. So it really does get a good seal on the bottom of your doors. In order to do some basic basic door sealing and uh, seals for windows as well, there's all sorts of kits to do that. Here in America, a lot of this stuff is available in Australia, but here this, it's more freely available to the, the everyday consumer. So along these walls, there's uh, all sorts of insulation here. There's blown in fiberglass, uh, which you use a, a rental system. It uses a blower to puff in air and give an even coat of uh, fluffy fiberglass. And here's cellulose, which is a recycled material. This uh, you can see here, it's just a, a sort of a papery stuff. It's made from recycled cardboard and newspaper. So that has excellent moisture, thermal and sound properties. So really excellent stuff. It's also available in Australia, but it's just very easy to get here uh, because DIY home improvement uh, for energy efficiency is, is much more common here. So you can uh, buy the insulation here and you can rent the machines here as well. There's also all all types of insulation here. There's glass fiber insulation, there's uh, mineral fiber, mineral wool, uh, uh, rock wool uh, insulation here, freely available. There's also up here, all sorts of insulation knife here, which is uh, one thing to, to cut uh, bats of insulation or boards of insulation, a purpose-made knife. It's actually really easy, makes it easy to do something like that. This is something that's not available in Australia or at least not, not widely used. There's different names for it, uh, Propavent, uh, Provent. These things go at the eve of your ceiling 
uh, in, in your roof uh, down towards the eave, and these make sure that you get proper ventilation from the eave up to the roof surface, the roof underside. So when you stuff insulation in the at the ceiling level uh, or the floor of the roof space, it doesn't go all the way to the eave and block air from getting up and cooling or uh, removing moisture from the roof roof surface. That's what these are for. There's also here a very cheap and simple idea for doing a seal along a bottom plate of your, your wall for new construction. You put this foam strip down around the perimeter and then you lay your bottom plate on top of that and it's, that squishes this, this foam seal underneath and gets a really cheap and good, uh, good enough seal at the bottom plate. So otherwise it's a really difficult thing to do. It's labor intensive to go along with caulk and you have to make sure that you actually do it well. This is really cheap, really simple, really fast. No, this should be done on every single uh, bottom plate. Um, it's also, because it's uh, a foam plastic, it's a capillary break. So uh, moisture from the slab or the ground won't seep up into the uh, wood and uh, contribute to rot. You, you can get these foam boards here, lots of different thicknesses here uh, for doing cutting around different things to make good air sealing around large gaps. But here's something you can't get in Australia, not to my knowledge yet. You've heard of spray polyurethane foam, spray foam. Well, it's uh, generally made as a two-part system. So it has part A and part B, and these go together. This comes with a gun to spray, and so you could get difficult to reach or difficult to handle places in your home do spray foam without a contractor there to do it for you. I'm not saying that you can't screw this up. Absolutely, you can. There are strict, uh, very specific instructions for when you should use this and where you should use it. It's okay for use in residential construction, not okay for use in most cons commercial construction because of fire regulations, but it really does give you another option for doing some otherwise very difficult to insulate and air seal spaces in your home. So this, you could insulate your floor with this and it would do both an air seal and insulation at the same time. So uh, this does, this says up to uh, 25 mils thick, about 20 square meters. So several of these kits would insulate your whole floor for the crawl space under your home. So it could make a cold floor into a warm floor, pretty straightforward. So you can see in the back here, it actually comes with, comes in two pressurized containers um, at the right mixing ratio. So that's, that's another option that's available here. So now I'm in my, the favorite section, uh, which is the bath fan section here, which is, uh, there are a lot of products that are available in Australia uh, that they don't really uh, have them here in America because they've had a longer time to develop better products that are still affordable and really do the job. So a lot of the, the fans uh, that I've talked about in Australia before um, have uh, just a, a simple uh, three-bladed axial impeller and they just can't handle uh, static pressure. They can't handle back pressure from bad ductwork or any ductwork, really. So uh, when you start ducting your, your fans to outside like you're supposed to with the National Construction Code now, um, you don't want that moisture going into your, your roof space. You want it to be going outside where it's not going to cause any harm. So to do that, you need a good fan that can handle back pressure. So here, this is a centrifugal fan. It's got uh, a hamster wheel type of uh, impeller, and that has many blades. This is much better at handling back pressure. So this is gonna give you much better performance, even in spite of suboptimal installation. So uh, a lot of the fans here are pretty entry level here. So these are, are fairly affordable and uh, they uh, can operate with, um, they have the Energy Star label here. So Energy Star means it's a government label, which is really a quality control thing at its first. So these have been tested to handle high back pressure and still deliver airflow against that back pressure and still be quiet and still be energy efficient. So it's a really good label if you're looking for something, uh, a basic, decent uh, entry level quality, Energy Star label is a good thing to look for in America. And most fans have the Energy Star label, which is great. So that's a private industry led certification and it really helps give a stamp for good performance. A lot of these fans uh, move um, decent amount of air with pretty low sound ratings. So they use different different sounds here, different ratings for sound in America versus Australia. 
but uh, they're, they're pretty comparable. I can put conversion in the, in the description of this video. But um, you can see there's lots of different units that are available. And uh, they some come with lights, some come with heaters, some come with humidity sensors, uh, but they all uh, move air um, and they all are very quiet and energy efficient. So a lot of great brands here. Uh, so really top name brands and then entry level brands, uh, store, store private label entry level brands. And also another thing that's different here is I'd say it's definitely common to find very bad installation of fans in Australia and America. And something like this, a just a standard kit here with just a simple flex duct will often lead to very bad installation unless you really take care. So it's definitely possible to do a bad installation here in America too. So one thing I'd recommend rather than a simple flex duct is to use dryer to wall kit. It has this semi-rigid aluminum ductwork that really holds up. It doesn't droop. It doesn't bunch. So here's a, another length of it of, uh, that you can buy separately. It stretches out to many times its length, but it's, it doesn't bunch and it doesn't crimp. So um, it really holds its, its diameter so that the airflow is not harmed. So this semi-rigid uh, expandable duct is really good for using for uh, dryers and uh, bath fans and kitchen fans to make, make sure you get good airflow every time. Uh, it's much better than this. Uh, this is just, uh, it says heavy duty flex duct, but it really is quite, you can see from the picture, a typical duct installation there of uh, just lots of extra duct work and uh, lots of noodles and that every bend harms the airflow. So highly recommend this. And I hope we get some of this in Australia soon. Other things here, uh, each one of these bath fans, it comes in a pretty well sealed box. It's a solid metal box. You can seal it well to the interior finish, the box itself is well sealed so this doesn't become part of your building air leakage problem uh, the fan is not contributing to building leakage and it's uh, made for better performance so a lot of good products that i hope we start getting some in australia